I was on a business trip to Mumbai. I fell sick and had to take antibiotics. My name is Michael Schmid, born February 1st, 1983, from Zurich. I still feel weak, but I'm looking forward to coming home. <coughs> <coughs> Are you feeling unwell? Ooh. We have an emergency. Call the ambulance. Meine Damen und Herren, wir werden nur die Kabine für die Landung vorbereiten. Mit einem dem ich hier nur sagen habe, ist noch prepare la cabine pour la tissage. He has a bacterial infection. Give him antibiotics. The antibiotics are not working. We'll try another antibiotic. I'm sorry. The other antibiotics proved ineffective. We will have to resort to backup antibiotics. These can have serious side effects, but they are our last hope. As you appear to be suffering from an infection caused by multi-resistant bacteria, you have been moved to the isolation ward. Unfortunately, there's a lot of truth to this fictional story. It illustrates the massive threat antibiotic resistance poses to all of us as antibiotics are an integral part to our modern standard of medicine. An effective range of antibiotics is essential to ensure that patients are not at risk of deadly infections when undergoing surgery, immunotherapy, transplantation or chemotherapy. The overuse of antibiotics in humans and animals led to the growth of microorganisms resistant to common antibiotics. Today, more than 1 million patients die each year from drug-resistant infections that we used to be able to treat. The situation is made worse by severe lack of interest and investment on the part of large pharmaceutical companies. The return on investment in antibiotics is extremely low. Therefore, new antibiotics are rarely brought to the market. And without appropriate countermeasures, the future looks bleak. One of the passengers is sick. Call security. He has a bacterial infection. Take him to the isolation ward. Sorry, Mr. Schmidt. There's nothing we can do for you. Fortunately, this story does not have to become reality. While antibiotic resistance poses a serious threat not only to our health, but also to society, efforts are being made to find new approaches to treating infections that no longer respond to existing antibiotics. In my research group, we are exploring an alternative source for new antibiotics, metal complexes. We use cutting-edge approaches such as automated synthesis and machine learning to efficiently explore metal-containing compounds as antibiotics. Our goal is to develop promising compounds further all the way towards clinical trials, but also to understand their biological effects in detail. But what exactly are metal compound antibiotics? How could they save us from a future where every infection could be fatal? Let's find out. Metal complexes, also known as metal compounds, could be an invaluable resource for new antibiotics. To understand why this is the case requires some basic understanding of chemistry. So here is a recap. This is a carbon atom. By forming pairs of electrons, it can form bonds with other atoms, such as hydrogen or other carbon atoms. Carbon has four electrons available for bonding. It can therefore form bonds to up to four different atoms. When two or more atoms are held together by chemical bonds, we speak of a molecule. There are an incredible number of molecules. This molecule, for example, is caffeine. 
Here is a silver atom. The silver can form a bond with caffeine. We call it a metal complex. Metal complexes are molecules like any other. However, they contain at least one metal atom, which has a significant effect on the properties and behavior of the molecule. In a metal complex, the metal atom is surrounded by other bound molecules. These are called ligands. Metal complexes have several unique properties that make them interesting candidates for the discovery of new drugs. One is their geometry, which differs significantly from that of carbon-based molecules. All of life on Earth is based on carbon. Carbon can form four bonds. Nature uses them to form three-dimensional structures such as carbohydrates, enzymes, proteins, and DNA. However, lab-made carbon-based molecules tend to be flat and two-dimensional, as chemists still struggle to imitate nature. Different rules apply to metal complexes. Metals often have more than four electrons available for bonding, allowing many more molecule geometries, which are typically three-dimensional and easy to make in the lab. Drugs need to interact with three-dimensional targets. Therefore, a lab-made metal complex may be able to bind more tightly to these targets. But there is more to metal complexes. They can release parts of the molecules around the metal, which are called ligands. Under certain conditions, this leads to biological effects, such as light absorption by the electrons of the metal complex. The energy obtained from the absorbed light can have different effects, such as releasing ligands that can then kill diseased cells. Alternatively, the energy absorbed from the light is transferred to the molecules that surround the metal complex, such as water or oxygen, which are thereby transformed into more reactive forms that can kill bacteria. This property is already used in clinical practice. In photodynamic therapy, for example, cancer cells are specifically killed by the release of reactive species in the cancer in response to light. Metal complexes can also undergo other types of reactions in which the metal complex either absorbs or releases electrons in its environment, enabling it to interfere with and disrupt cellular processes. All these mechanisms have been used to target diseases ranging from cancer to malaria. The group led by Angelo Fry is currently exploiting these and other properties of metal complexes to treat drug-resistant bacteria. Precious metals such as gold, silver and copper were used in ancient Egypt to store drinking water and treat disease. This was done either by throwing coins into the water or by coating the containers with a precious metal. The Egyptians believed that over time, the metals would release small particles that would disperse and disrupt the growth of microbial pathogens, keeping the water safe. Today, around a dozen different metals are approved for human use in a range of different medicines. At the same time, more metal-based complexes than ever before are in human clinical trials for indications such as cancer, COVID-19 and malaria. In 2019, a palladium-based compound called TUCAD was approved for the treatment of prostate cancer in men. While metal complexes have been widely used in clinics and clinical trials, their antimicrobial properties have only been discovered in the last two decades, opening up a new field of research. Metal complexes are a huge category, with over 30 different possible metals. So, there is no trivial answer to the question of whether metal complexes are good antibiotics per se. However, an invaluable contribution comes from an initiative of the Community for Open Antimicrobial Drug Discovery, COAD. The goal was simple, to search for new molecules with antimicrobial properties. 
To do this, they launched a crowdsourced initiative. They offered to test any chemical compound against critical bacteria and fungi free of charge. Although less than 2% of the 300,000 molecules tested were active against bacteria, the endeavor was highly successful. Among the tested molecules, there were 1,000 metal complexes, 250 of which were active, which is one in four. In addition, 10% of the tested metal complexes were active against bacteria and non-toxic to healthy human cells. In perspective, the results are remarkable. Of all the organic molecules tested, only 0.6% were active against bacteria and non-toxic. This shows that metal complexes have a much higher chance of being antibacterial without being toxic than other molecules. Some metal complexes are toxic to humans, but not all. The structure of a given molecule determines its properties and whether it is toxic or not. This is why it is important to test all molecules adequately. Until recently, metals and their complexes were largely discarded for medical applications because they were collectively thought to be toxic. As a result, there have been very few studies with metal complexes in animal models. Many of these have been conducted in relatively simple organisms. However, available data show no evidence that metal complexes are more toxic than organic molecules. To overcome this prejudice against metal toxicity, more data are needed, which will have to be collected in thorough studies. To the best of our knowledge, there is no reason to believe that metal complexes are more toxic than conventional organic small molecules. The path from the discovery of a molecule with antibiotic properties to the approval of a new drug is long and very expensive. In 2025, there are no metal complex antibiotics in clinical trials. So realistically, we are at least five to 10 years away from any metal compound being used in humans to treat disease. However, the field has gained momentum in recent years. The rise of antibiotic resistance is a pressing issue. For example, Professor Jim Thomas's group at the University of Sheffield in the UK has spun out a startup company with ruthenium based antibiotic complexes, which has secured funding and is in the pre clinical stage. With countless complexes yet to be discovered, the possibilities with metal complexes are almost endless. This requires more research, more funding, and new approaches to drug discovery. In case you were wondering, Michael survived without metal-based antibiotics. But without major research efforts, similar stories may not have a happy ending. That is why research into alternative antibiotics is essential. Visit our website to find out more about metal-based antibiotics and to follow the progress of our research. <laughs>